Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Mary Christensen, the Director of Product Marketing here at Billing Platform, and I'd like to thank you for joining us to learn how monetizing usage-based services can help you get closer to your customers by creating new business models. In today's session, we're going to dig into how and why subscriptions and metered business models have evolved from things like simple magazine subscriptions and meter readers walking house to house to see how much electricity was used to today, where a variety of other industries are deploying usage-based pricing models and really seeing the benefits. With me today to talk about these changes is Billing Platform co-founder and chief strategy officer, Nathan Shin. Nathan is an engineer to the core with over 20 years of experience in high volume enterprise information systems and is closely involved in the technical evolution of our products and platform. Thanks for being with us today, Nathan. My pleasure, Mary. So let's dig in a little deeper as to why we're here. We all know that revenue models are changing and moving into the mainstream. And it's so much more than telecom. Today it's tech businesses, software and SaaS, and even healthcare, banking, real estate, automotive, and advertising companies, to name a few that are offering usage-based services. And as predicted by Gartner, by 2025, 75% of enterprise software providers will offer a consumption or transaction-based pricing model in their portfolio up from 35% today. That's a significant jump in a matter of just a few years. Nathan, with that context, maybe set the stage for the audience and explain the usage collection process. Sure, it's pretty straightforward, but not everybody thinks about usage-based processing or usage rating um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So really what it entails is taking customer usage data, so what your customers use, of your product or service offering, usually you know, uh, captured by a service delivery system like a telecommunication switch or a, um, you know, your your television if you're if you're you know have a smart TV and you're and you're downloading films or what have you, but it just takes that usage data and it and it sends that in its raw form to what's known in the telco business and um, others as mediation system. So that collects the usage and, and literally what its, what its job is, is to determine four things, who, what, when, and how much. So raw usage comes in, we need to know who we want to bill for this usage, what, it, what product actually is being used, uh, when it was used, and uh, how much quantity. Um, and then once we've determined that over, you know, it could be billions of records, depending on the size of the company, we send it in search of a rate. So we need to find out uh, you know, how much to charge for this service now that we know who it is and how much they used and what it was. We go through, you know, it could be an account hierarchy. We look at you know, their subscriptions, what they've signed up for, maybe what's on their contract. If there is a, a more complex account hierarchy in place, we may need to traverse up that hierarchy or you know, grab the default rate. And uh, along this process, we start to you know, realize whether or not we have a, an error. So we could have just a, a data error and say, let's maybe the, the data that's coming in is kind of junky. We couldn't extrapolate a date from the date field we had referenced, or maybe we couldn't find a rate. Maybe the, the uh, account is in place uh, using the service, but they haven't been provisioned in the billing system. So if it's a good provisioning system or sorry, a, a good mediation system, it's going to raise alerts and give you an opportunity to correct that information before it just drops that revenue on the floor. Um, and then finally, once we're done, we've, uh, you know, got rated usage and we're ready to bill it. Great. That really helps set the stage. Thanks for giving us that overview. Um, and now that we know that usage based pricing has actually been around for a while, What's changed and what are some of the new industries deploying usage-based offers? Sure. Um, not all of us remember metered telecommunications service. A lot of that has done, uh, gone to subscriptions. Um, but I think if, if, if we have any homeowners out there, you can certainly uh, notice on the side of your house that utility meter that's bolted there. Um, so really the, these are the kind of the traditional uh, usage-based rating systems that, that have 
dealt with, you know, massive volumes and are, are typically aligned with usage based rating. But really, we're moving into a lot of different areas uh, for usage based rating. Uh, advertising is a, is a huge one. Software as a service or software in general, typically thought of as a flat rate subscription for seat licenses. Software now uh, has a lot of metered offerings associated with it. Uh, healthcare, real estate, banking, uh, automotive ride sharing is another interesting case wherein uh, today, you know, people may not be as interested in buying an automobile. I know when I was growing up, um, you know, it was uh, all you could think of was to to get your, your own car, get your driver's license and, and get out of the house. But to, in this day and age, you know, that's less of a of a focus. And so people are really kind of interested in just, you know, getting a car and paying for it as they go. And, and, and so companies like uh, VW are coming up with really creative ways of packaging that service making it really easy just to um, get into a rideshare program wherein you can just, uh, you know, uh, pay for what you're going to use in terms of your transportation in the car. Yeah, and I hate to admit it, but I actually remember a telephone that maybe lo would look a little bit more modern than what's on the screen, but um, I definitely remember uh, those days of usage-based um, plans with those telephones. So it's clear from what you've just described that in the past few years, companies have really started to get serious about adding usage and consumption pricing to their products and services. We've seen that this pricing method can be financially attractive um, as an entry point to try new services or for pay-as-you-go offers, and also to offer a better match of price to value delivered. But usage models can also be financially risky and operationally challenged to implement. So why do you think there's been this shift? Well, it, you know, as we saw from the, the ride share program, um, you know, some of it is, is cultural. We live in a more digitally oriented society. There's a lot more digital products on the market for sale. Uh, COVID is really driving that and accelerating that. Um, the, the less desire because of COVID to uh, have services that involve uh, person-to-person -person contact. So lots of uh, digital products coming on, uh, coming on board. Um, also advances in technology are enabling more digital products to be distributed globally. So we are in a global economy, a barrier to entry because of you know, great strides in bandwidth, et cetera, have lowered the barrier to entry for uh, companies or even individuals to start to you know, develop a, a digital business. So there's an extreme amount of competition, um, you know, in the in the digital services market. And so with that competition comes the need to differentiate. And sometimes it's not so much differentiating on the product or the offering that that can start to become a wash after a while. Um, but it's it's differentiating based on competitive pricing. So offering different ways to, to sell your service or to offer a low barrier to entry to people to get into your service through a usage or metered type of offering uh, can become differentiating and, and more desirable. So, you know, in the example of, a, you know, a flat rate subscription to a television channel, maybe the consumer doesn't want to commit to a monthly service over and over again if they just want to try out one program or another in which case you know just buying what you uh, intend to use as an entry point would be uh, a way to acquire customers you know more long term into that flight right subscription eventually but you know possibly as a as just a metered customer going forward and which you know brings up the concept of a uh, subscription fatigue. Do I do I really want to pay month over month over month for this service, or am I finding that I am only using a little bit of this service, and and I would really much prefer to pay for just what I use? So benefits of being able to really offer more creative pricing through usage based metered uh, type of programs and and plans. Well, in this day and age, as I mentioned, with heavy comp uh, competition with the global economy, its growth is a is is something that 
uh, is maybe second to just sheer survival. So surviving in a market that's oversaturated or filled with competitors, your ability to differentiate yourself uh, based on price may be one of those things that 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 help you thrive. Um, cost savings, you know, if you're metering a service, you're uh, able to really understand how uh, how the usage of that service it and the and what you're charging your customer relate to your costs. So you have a much more granular understanding of cost and margin, especially if you're doing things like reselling a service. If you're reselling a service, you're maybe getting metered for that service as well from the supplier. <clears throat> so having a metered service to reflect that can really help you with your with your margin, tracking your margin and, and controlling your costs. Um, and then, of course, customer satisfaction. If the customer can find a, you know other options to engage with you uh, in your business, they're going to be happier customers. Also, it brings you closer to your customer because you understand what their usage patterns are. You can provide more value add offers to them based on their usage. Uh, you just have a lot more intelligence about how your customers interact with your product if you have a, a usage based model. Makes a lot of sense. But how do companies take advantage of this shift, knowing that data is coming from a variety of different sources and it's all coming in different formats? Yeah, so there's you know the requirement that you can process high volumes of data, especially if you're an enterprise company. So if you're an enterprise custom, uh, company, you have, you have a tremendous amount of customers and a tremendous amount of usage data. And then the more granular you start to uh, leverage that usage data, the, the, the more complex the processing around that high volume becomes. So you really need systems that are capable of doing uh, high volume usage processing. I mean, big systems. Um, you know, so what that, what that does is give you the opportunity to do things like uh, monetize IoT devices. So you may have a lot of uh, you know devices in play uh, that are part of your service offering, and now if you can grab information from those devices, you can start to gather intel that tell you a little bit you know, more information about uh, how you might change your pricing models against those products, as as we mentioned before. Um, again, intelligence within the data, so taking advantage of of gathering you know large amounts of usage data is really powerful and in this day and age you, you're able to really uh you know with the, the newer systems and and um better uh storage capabilities you're able to to really take advantage of artificial intelligence across a, a large data set to come up with information about you know all kinds of things um based on machine learning algorithms applied to that data um <clears throat> You'll need a flexible monetization platform in order to take advantage of this. So if you really want to maximize the capability of the data, you really need a system that can interpret that data and do and respond differently based on different elements of the data that you drive. Um, and that leads to better abilities to automate. So again, the more information that you have coming into your system with different attributes of that data, the more opportunity you have to create uh, more automated reactions to that data and those reactions may be price changes may be different um, uh, rates being applied to that data etc and then of course uh, you have more uh, agility with better systems capable of monetizing large and diverse volumes of data and you're able to reduce your time to market right so if you have this infrastructure in place and you're able to take components to that data and very quickly adjust or create new pricing models around that, you can create essentially brand new offerings out of the same old stuff that you've had for a while uh, very quickly and get that to market very quickly. Right, and now for the million dollar question, how does a company know if usage-based pricing is right for them? Sure, so you, you, you take a look at your usage models that you might implement and you have to think to yourself does your market is this in demand for your market number one uh number two does it 
provide uh, strategic opportunities? Are, are there things that you could be leveraging that you're not because you're just offering a flat rate subscription? And you know, other opportunities like we mentioned before to offer the same service with different packaging or, or different price entry points um, may be available in the market, but not available to you because of uh, system constraints. Um, but once you start to develop these different uh, selling strategies and, and packages and plans, you have to think about what your custom, what your existing customers might do with those. So you might be thinking about gathering new market share, but your existing customers may want a piece of that action as well. And does that put your existing offering at risk? Because this other uh, more affordable alternative potentially exists out there. Are you going to get a mass migration or exodus over to that more affordable option? And while you know you're retaining your customers, which is a good thing, maybe it's take, your your revenue is taking a hit. Um, <clears throat> and can your current system support it? We've been over this. It really takes extraordinary systems with extraordinary capacity to leverage data in such a way that you can have flexibility with regard to monetizing it and ability to do high volume processing against that data. So those are those are really things to, to consider. Terrific, and, and we have a few examples here of uh, some customers that have implemented usage-based pricing. Can you talk a little bit in detail about each of these customers and how they're sure. doing that? Absolutely. So I'm sure everybody's heard of JP Morgan Chase. They're a Fortune 500 company. Um, and as such, they have huge amounts of volume and they meter probably at almost, you know, 90% of their services. Um, it's usage based uh, type of metering. So if you take just their commercial banking unit alone, they have over uh, 2000 different SKUs or, or uh, service services that they that they meter through their system and so having a very flexible um mediation and billing and rating uh platform in place to process all of that usage across all of those different services gives them the opportunity to to, to offer better pricing in a, in a very competitive market uh, commercial banking is is highly competitive so how do you offer incentives um, well, you're going to do it through pricing because banking is banking at the end of the day. So uh, different competitive offerings based on, let's say, your average daily balance. Uh, you know, so metering the average daily balance coming into the system and coming up with incentives to say, hey, look, you get a credit against uh, the rest of your banking fees because you're keeping such an, uh, a nice higher balance in your in your account or taking existing products and then packaging them and offering specialized pricing based on that packaging it is a clear advantage of, of having a flexible um, usage-based monetization system. Uh, Cloudera is a cloud infrastructure provider. And so uh, cloud infrastructure is like most companies these days are, are not in, it may be a reality today, but but most companies in this day and age do not have their own data centers or their own machines. They're they're taking uh, that infrastructure and outsourcing it to uh, cloud providers, cloud infrastructure pro providers like Cloudera, and Cloudera uh, uh, and AWS and other you know larger uh, type of um, infrastructure providers. Uh, they meter the usage of that infrastructure. So you're paying per CPU time. You're paying fractions of a penny on data storage, on bandwidth. All of those types of dimensions of your infrastructure costs are metered uh, to you and, and built in that way. And so more creative ways to gather that information and, and price it and package it um, are available to companies like this because of usage-based uh, pricing models. Uh, Direct TV, uh, there's a particular advertising unit uh, of Direct TV that is um, that that leverages uh, usage based models in a very different way. So they offer sort of a uh, an ad exchange, if you will, where you have consumers of advertisements 
and sellers of those advertising artifacts and, and creative content and hosting um, all coming together into this one system where um, everybody gets a gets a cut and so there's a netting at the end of the day so you have a you have vendors um, providing advertising uh, facilities um, and then the system metering the usage of those facilities in the form of let's say clicks and impressions and things like that uh, you know, think of a banner ad uh, flashing up on your screen. Well, on the back end of that, there is, oh, it flashed in front of your screen. You saw it. That's a, an impression. And you clicked through. That's another charge um, that's metered. So this is all usage that comes down and gets metered. But at the end of the day, it becomes more uh, interesting when you look at the ecosystem that's being enabled by this, wherein you have a marketplace where those things can be sold and a, and a marketplace where those things can actually, the usage for those items can be captured and then all of that revenue distributed across the parties involved, including DirecTV. Thanks, Nathan. Those are great examples of companies from vastly different industries who are taking advantage of usage-based pricing and achieving the benefits you mentioned earlier, the ability to grow their business, control their costs, and improve customer satisfaction. So thanks for all that information. Um, and for those of you who may not be familiar with Billing Platform, I wanted to spend just a minute um, and provide a quick overview of our solution. What we do is we help companies realize revenue for any product offering from simple subscriptions to sophisticated usage-based pricing models that Nathan's talked about, um, and everything in between. Uh, we provide full lifecycle support to optimize the revenue process. That's from product setup, quoting, billing and invoicing, revenue recognition, through to payments and collections. Our cloud-based platform automates the quote to cash process through a single solution. And with our built-in usage processing capability being one of our key components, we're able to support all of what Nathan's described and how our customers are able to solve these problems. So this unparalleled flexibility of the platform puts enterprises in control of how they differentiate, differentiate in the market, maximize profitability, reduce operational costs, and improve the customer experience. So with that, if you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. So please reach out to either Nathan or myself. And if you're interested in learning how to solve your complex monetization challenges, please contact us for a free consulting session at contact at billingplatform.com. Thanks again for joining us today. We hope to see you at a future session. Have a good day.